Good morning, everybody. Sorry for our late start today, just multitasking and couldn't get here quite in time, but glad you're here with me today. We're gonna do something a little bit different from our normal, uh, and we're just gonna get warmed up nice and easy, and we're gonna go through some nice stretches uh, and just things to get us moving rather than feeling like it's a big workout today. So let's go ahead and get up and uh, start doing a little bit of marching. So let's go ahead and start with your arms going up, out, and to the side as we bring those knees up and loose in front of us, pulling the toes up in front of us rather than just sliding up our legs. We want to bring them up in front as we keep driving length down to the leg on the ground. Good, perfect. And let's just keep letting those arms warm up, get some blood pumping. Can't let it be too easy. Good. Keep the chin down low towards the floor and the back of the neck up. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and bring your arms to a rest. Keep your legs going. And let's just let your arms swing naturally. And as you're swinging naturally, I want you to speed it up a little bit and think about there being hot coals on the ground and you don't want to really touch the ground so long, but we don't want to be so quick that we don't get that full length to the groin. So make sure that knee gets straight every time. Make sure that hip finds its full length every time. Keep the shoulders down, the ribs anchored in the back of the neck floating high. And now let it come back to our normal speed. And now we're gonna slow down into a little bit of balance work. So now let's try and balance on one leg. Feel the hips trying to be in front of the ankle bones. Little space between your legs. If you need a light touch on a thin piece of ice, you're welcome to do that. And then let's switch legs. Finding that balance on the opposite leg. Leg being straight, knees loose and wide. Shoulders anchored, ribs anchored, back of the neck long. Trying to keep those hips in front of the ankle. And then switch. Keep the space, keep posture. And now let's use your arms for something. So let's go ahead and just do a little bit of table cleaners. Act like you've got some dust pads under your hands and you're just cleaning off the table at chest height. Keep your shoulders pulled away from your ears and feel how that makes your arms feel a little bit more disassociated with your body and it feels your abs and lats kind of connecting and feeling stronger. And now let's switch legs, balance on the other leg. And now let's go with a different arm action where we're just swooping our arm. It's like you're doing the wave or it's like your window is open on a beautiful day like today and you're just letting the air take your arm and creating that wave effect. Keep the shoulders down and the back of the neck long away from the ear. And let's go ahead and rest. And so we are gonna go down and do a quick bird dog and a little bit of core activation before we go through our stretches today. So with this, uh, it'll be nice. Use a yoga block or something. So if you don't have one, get one handy. Mine fell off, so I've got to pick it up. So let's go ahead and start with your uh, your hands and knees beast position. Put your block on your back. Find a difficult position for you, but not so challenging that it's falling the entire time. And now let's go ahead and push through your arms and your chest to melt your knees off the ground. If you can walk with your beast, go for a little bit of loose walking. With the job that you're trying to do, trying to stay loose in the back of your knee. Focus on your knees being loose and wide and trying to hold no tension in the back of your knee. That will almost always drive more energy to your core. Five, three, two, let your knees rest. Take your block off. Either sit back onto a block, onto your feet, or you can sit onto a shin box position, but make sure that you're not on your arms here. We're going to do a bird dog next. And with the bird dog, it's really important that you don't deviate on the mat. Meaning when you line up on your, on your mat, 
I want you to draw an imaginary line down the center of your belly button and chin. And so let's go ahead and do that. You're gonna get into your position, put your block on your back, put your hands and knees where they should be. And then before you start, draw an imaginary line from your nose, through your chin, through your chest, through your belly button and all the way through your knees. And now your job is to stay with your belly button in, in the center of that line. If you deviate, then you're not going to feel your abs as much and you're going to use your hip a little too much. So let's go ahead and keep your toes tucked under, lengthen one arm and leg, make a fist and pull your shoulder away from that reaching fist, push your heel through the wall behind you, push your chin and your chest and your shoulders away from the ground, Make sure that you're not deviating over towards that knee. Keep yourself in the center for five, reaching four, three, push your chin and your chest away for two, one, bring everything down nice and wide. And now let's go ahead and lengthen the other arm and leg, making a fist, pulling the shoulder away from the fist, but pushing the chin and the chest away from the floor, lengthening through the middle of your heel and knee, making sure that you're not deviating off of that line. Feeling your abs work, feeling your chin and chest push away for five, two, rest down, take the block off your back, and let's just find a little shin box position. And so for the shin box, just feel it out, see what today brings for you. We're not trying to sit up tall, we're just assessing what our pelvis and our hips feel like. If you feel tension in your knees or hips when you're getting into these positions, tip yourself more, get onto your elbow as you find your position, and don't come too far in. You shouldn't feel any tension here. And if you do, then try a relaxing tension to the knee, to the hip, to the foot. A lot of times people will tell me, this really hurts my knee. And just by telling them to simply relax their knee, the pain goes away. So, so make sure you're not unconsciously holding tension in something that you're trying to release, right? So, all right, so now let's do a little bit of a toe stretch, a little bit of toe work. So we're gonna start with our lean back on our knees. And when we get into this position, I'm gonna show you from the front and then I'll show you from the side, is that we need to make sure that we have a nice wide A position. And that doesn't mean we need to be out here. I want it to be that you're right on the middle edge of your kneecap and that you have an A position but don't feel like your hips are spread too wide. And so when we do this exercise, it's important we set up like this because if we set up here or if we pinched our legs together during the action, that's going to create tension between the hip and the back. So I'm going to show you now from this position. we want. Your toes tucked under, so I find it's kind of easier to get onto your hands and knees to make sure they're all the way under. Make sure you've got that nice wide knee position. And now as you go back, you put your hands on your hips and you want to keep your chin tucked down as your ribs crunch down and keep your hips straight as you go into a toe stretch. As you're going back there, you are going to feel a pretty big stretch through the front of your quads, but I also want you to feel lengthening coming from your groin so that there's no pinching or bending through your hips. You don't have to go back as far as you possibly You don't have to go back as far as you possibly can, but you do have to keep your shoulders and ribs anchored down. You do have to feel that you only go as far back as your hips are straight and your groin is driving length through it. You want to make sure that you're releasing any tension in the back of your knees and focusing on the ribs and the shoulders anchoring down to protect your spine and to engage your core. You wanna feel all those things happening so your toes can release and you can find the stretch and the release and you don't force yourself into anything that doesn't feel good. And so now, relax, and we're gonna use our ball on your foot. And so if you have a mighty roller, you can use the wooden ball at the end of the stick. If you have a lacrosse ball, you can use a lacrosse ball. But what I do want you to, to do is make sure that you have something to hold on to so that you're not just balancing because 
when we balance, we have, and we're doing things that kind of invoke a little pain, we might pinch together and that creates a lot of stuff that we don't want to uh, incur. So what I'd like you to do, if you're starting with a little lacrosse ball, and a tennis ball's okay guys, but it's not gonna work. So you can get the idea of it today, but get a lacrosse ball or get a mighty roller. Make sure you have something that's firmer than a tennis ball. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the front of our foot first with the ball. But anytime we're on the ball, we also need to have some other contact of that foot on the floor. So we're never just pushing onto it with nothing touching but the ball. We are always on a heel of the same foot. And then we relax off of it. And then we just try and see how much weight we can push into it without bending our knee. And then we just let our weight rock off of it, find another spot and take our time releasing tension under the foot on the ball and trying to make sure that you really cover all areas of the front of your foot. It's sometimes, uh, sometimes people will just pick the spot that they feel their pain in as they do this and they'll just grind on one spot for a minute or so. It's really important that you're moving around and, and going to places that you don't even know if you can do it because you're afraid the ball might slip out. If you get to that point, what I always do is I put my other foot on the ball and if I'm gonna try and pull and or push my toes backwards in order for the ball not to slip out, I might put my other foot there so I really get into that stretch on the toe. Good. And so now let's switch feet and we're gonna do the other foot. And now if you're on the mighty roller, the same thing would be happening the only difference is that it would look like this and you might not be in such an extreme calf stretch on this one, but the ball is a little bit more tender or a little bit harder and more direct, so it might be a little bit more painful. So what I actually found with a couple of my clients the other day is if you cheat, you can put that underneath as long as you know, careful of your floor, but if you put that underneath, and have the ball underneath the yoga mat, it, it kind of softens up that, uh, that edge of the mighty roller ball. So however you're getting that, that seek and destroy mission to happen within your foot, I want you to take time and address that any tension or anything that feels extra painful is something that you, you need to take a little bit of time to work out, but not stay on and focus on completely. We need to work all the area around that. Hi, Kaya. He always loves to help at this time. All right, so now we're going to work the back of our feet next. And so for that one, we wanna make sure that again, we have some part of our foot on the ground. So we're going to put your heel on the, on the ball with the ball of your foot or your toes on the ground. And I wanna make sure that that other foot is in front of you this time. And that way you can decide how much weight to put back onto that heel. And don't forget your arch, guys. You did the front half of your arch when we were doing the front half of your foot. But don't forget to get that arch in the middle and towards the back of your foot. It's not just your heel we're working on. Another thing to keep in mind is make sure that as you put your weight back over onto the other foot and you take your weight off the ball, you need to be with your heel lifted off the ground. If every time I go on to the other foot, my heel touches and my hip shift, then that's just gonna create a little bit of, uh, of feeling in my back and I don't wanna have anything exciting in my back. So again, don't focus on just the heel, but try and find those outer edges of the heel so it almost feels like the ball's about to slip out. So you can really kind of fluff up the pad of your foot from being just flattened all the time. All right, so let's go ahead and switch to the other foot. Again, same thing, put the ball on your heels, toe on the ground. You, it's really important to have that chair so that your feet don't get tired, or especially the standing leg that's not on the ball, that that ankle and, and foot don't get tired. If you find that you're feeling this on the, the, the foot holding you up more than you are the ball you roll, the foot you're rolling on, then uh, just take a break, take a rest, maybe don't spend so much time, or make sure you're holding on to something. Good, we've got about 30 seconds left on this foot. Find any areas you haven't hit yet and just make sure that you're releasing the stress of your day, 
stress in your mind as well as the stress in your body associated with that region. Don't just think that it's about your body. We have to make sure that we're addressing the release of our stress while we do these things as well. All right, so now let's go ahead and we're gonna do a little bit of a leg stretch next. And with this leg stretch, we're gonna need a bigger band. So one of our long bands that look like this. Sorry, sorry, Kaya. And if you don't have a long band like this, then you're going to need something that's up on uh, like a chair or a coffee table or something you can put your foot up onto, okay? And so with this one, the band really makes it nice because it allows you to activate your whole body while you're doing something as opposed to with the chair, we're only going to be able to put a stretch on, but we won't really feel our body activate. So if you, if you have the band, I want you to take the band and I want you to put it on the ball of your foot. And then you're gonna put a little stretch on the band with your elbows on the floor. You're gonna put the other leg down long on the floor. Okay, lay down. And then I want you to straighten out your leg that's in the band. Hi, Kayo, I know. Go lay down, please. And so as we bend and straighten that leg, we're going to try and find the knee to the perfect straight position. We don't want any bend in the knee at the top. If your leg only goes to the chair height, then that's fine, but make sure that the toe's pulling up towards the face and the, and the knee is staying straight and if it does bend then that means you need to lower it a little bit more and focus on straightening it now if you don't if you've got that band and you want to keep going in a bend and a straighten give me about 30 seconds more of that if you don't have a band then you put your foot up onto a, a, a chair and just work on pulling your toe up towards your face and then let it relax pull your toe up towards your face and then relax really careful that this hip just stays relaxed on the chair and it's never trying to hold itself up if you really want to take another step you could put a bell up on that same arm just to activate your core and then work on that toe flex and you could even try and reach the heel long feel a stretch and then come back down to the table or the chair and so these are options if you don't have a bell, uh, have a band, but if you do have a band, I prefer that option. So now let's go ahead and switch to the other leg. Band around your foot. Grab the band pretty close to your foot so that way as you push your foot away from your body, your elbows and your arm are holding all the tension so that your leg is not holding itself up there. Make sure you release the, any tension pinching your legs together. Shoulders and elbows should be on the ground. Ribs should be anchored to the floor. Toes pulling up towards the face. And now just bend your knee out wide and then straighten it as you push the tension into the hamstring and out of the front of the hip. And let's do that two more times. If you don't have the band, you should be doing the, the foot on the chair. If you have a weight, you can put that weight in the same arm as the stretching leg, and you could work that. And now let's go ahead and bend the knee and relax. So let's go ahead and come on up, and let's just try a shin box again and see how we're feeling with our shin box. Again, I, I feel that each time I come back to it, it's just a little bit looser. There's no like magic that it's like, oh yeah, I can totally sit up straight. But you should feel small differences in each thing as you're creating a workout. And if you're ever wondering if your workout is good for you or not, try doing a shin box or try doing little tests to see if you're gaining mobility with your workout or are you just getting tired and worn out we don't want to feel tired and worn out from our exercises we want to feel 
energized and, and activated from them. So let's go through one more, uh, one more today. I know it's not a long workout today, but you'll hopefully it'll probably be one of those ones you go to for recovery days, the days that you know you should be doing something, but you just don't feel like doing a ton. So, so this last one is an elbow plank. I'm going to show you on the chair. You can do it from the floor, but if you do it from the floor, make sure that you feel that your abs and your lats and your toes are the main workers on this exercise or your feet, I should say, not your toes, your feet. It's not just your toes. But I want, if you don't feel that is what you're really working, then I want you to come up higher. And if the chair is too low for you, then you can go up even a little higher. But be warned that if you go too high or if you go up to a countertop, you may not get enough activation to really feel that you can hold your position. So let's go ahead and find that, find those elbows onto whatever surface you're gonna be doing your plank on. Stick your butt up in the air as you kind of find your elbows into position. And now go ahead and step out into your plank, relaxing your heels, but never letting them touch the ground. And now, Bounce up towards your elbows and then push the body of your energy down towards your toes so you feel a foot stretch. And then bounce forward and then push back. Make sure your butt's not poking up and make sure your ribs and chin are pushing away from that chair or that table or floor as far as they can. And you never lose the length in your groin and that, that A-frame position. There should be no pinch between your legs. If you feel this in your back, try walking your feet in a little bit, but keep the length in your pelvis. Three, two, and rest, stand up, come on in, and relax. So what I'd like to do is finish on the ground with an extension exercise. So if you need a head support or something to make your head feel a little bit more comfortable, that's fine. But if you don't need anything, you're welcome to lay your head fat, flat on the floor. I also find that sometimes people don't like laying flat on the floor because of past back issues. So if you'd like to put your feet up onto, up onto a block or something a foot or so off the ground, sometimes that can feel good. So there's no rules. It's just what feels good to you. And so when we find our position, we want our palms up towards the ceiling. We want our arms resting flat on the floor. We want our feet resting wherever they're comfortable, whether they're up on a block or flat on the floor. But we want them in a little bit of an A-frame position. We never want them pinched together. And now let's go ahead and reach through your middle fingers. Tuck your chin and reach your neck long. Ribs anchor to the floor. Reach through your heels. Pull your toes up towards your face opening your chest as you're reaching through your middle fingers trying to keep your shoulders away from the ears reaching that neck as long as you can ribs anchoring down quads flexing those toes towards your face so the back of your legs can lengthen five lengthen through all your fingers two one melt into the mat and now we're going to do another one and and this is where you can play around with your blocks if you like to move them and you didn't want them or if you want to try them you're welcome to, to put them into place now and so let's try a slightly different arm position let's go out to the side a little bit further away from the body or if you were out wide before bring them a little closer to your body and now let's do the same thing where we reach through our heels, reach through our hands, reach through the back of our neck as our chin tucks away from the ceiling. Anchor your ribs into the floor as you exhale and lengthen and feel all that stretching energy going through the neck and the shoulders. Not pulling tension into one area, but just lengthening, feeling tension in all areas. Pulling the toes up to your face, lengthening through the heels. Three, two, and rest and melt. And let's go ahead and wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, roll your wrists, roll your ankles. Bend your knees up to put your feet flat on the floor. Bring your hands together, create a little friction and warmth. And with one breath, wake yourself up, wash your face. 
and give yourself a high five for starting your day right and doing something to make your body feel more activated and rested all at the same time. So have a great weekend. Just a heads up that I, this will be my last uh, Instagram post for a while in terms of live videos. I'm going to be transitioning to Burn Along and I'll be hosting Burn Along uh, live stream classes from now on on Fridays at 9 a.m. So slightly earlier time, but the same thing guys, I'll still have the recordings so you can always see the recordings here for, I won't say always, but you can see them here for at least a few more months until Burn Along is ready to go. And then uh, feel free to find me on Burn Along and you can again see the live classes there, but you can also record and, and be able to watch them at other times. and have access to a bunch of other trainers. So, hey, have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.